Good morning. So I'm headed out by myself. It's just me and the voices in my head this morning. The sun's just starting to come up. And I'll just show you where I'm sitting and kind of why. What this is, is just basically a bit of a hole in the top of the reef platform. It's 15 down to 16 meters, roughly. You can see it's pretty fluffy on top here. I don't necessarily, down to 16, that's where I want to be sitting. I don't necessarily sound around for fish, but if I see fish or bait, that's an added bonus. Generally, I just find a, a rough area where I think it's going to be good and um, just let the belly do the work. It works for me. I have tried in the past to sand around looking for fish and bait, but you can waste an hour doing that until you find something. So I find it's better just to anchor up, let the belly do the talking. Anyway, I'll get anchored up, get some lines out, and then I'll talk to you then. All right, always first things first, I've got a bait out. As soon as I pull up, I've got a bait ready to go or a plastic ready to go and just drop it straight over. Um, I'm sort of swinging between 14, 9, 15, and just off the edge, it goes to 16, there it is. You can see there's a bit of fluff and a bit of stuff all over the bottom there. I think that might be skippy or bait or something. It's a good sign anyway. When it shows up on both sounders, I don't know if you can see this one. This one doesn't show up too good on the GoPro. When I'm seeing that sort of stuff showing up on both sounders, I know it's real. Anyway, I'm gonna get set up, get some barely going, and get a couple another. I'm gonna put a plastic out on this side, and then I'll um, see how we go. So on this side, I'm chucking out a seven-inch Halco paddle prawn. I've smeared that with a bit of Procure scent there. But that's it, 70, 7 inch Helco paddle prawn on a 1.5 TT head. Um, really light. These ones just flutter down the trail super slowly, but because this tail is really sort of lightweight and really um, fragile, it flickers on the way down, even on the slow fall, which is really good. So I'll get this one out and uh, hopefully we can get a pink on before the sun comes up too far. Oh, I was just getting myself established. And this first rod I cast out, the bait must have made it to the bottom. I've got something on here already. Feels like it might be a skippy. That could have been what was showing up on the sounder. They were pretty skippy-like. Looking at arches. I don't know, it's got a bit of weight. Skippy are really deceiving though. You can have them on and... Yeah, it's a skippy. They feel bigger than they actually are when you hook them because they just put in so hard. him back for now but that's what would have been on the sounder when I pulled up so you might have a different idea I don't know I don't want to bag one brand over another but see this yellow band blend this yellow bag I think it's bluebird bait these muleys there you go they're always different they're always a lot bigger than our normal muleys here that I get from WA bait supply. I don't know if they come from somewhere else or somewhere not local, but for some reason I've never had much luck on these ones. I don't know why. They're great for barely, but I always avoid buying them. Again, I don't really want to bag out brands, but these ones here don't seem to work as good as those ones for some reason. I don't know if they're just not the local. Oh, hang on. I'm getting some snacks over here on my um, paddle prawn. Get back into it. How's that for a skippy? So my anchor just pulled out, that was a bit un unfortunate. Um, yeah, this spot here, it's a bit, there's rough rugged ground in front of me, but behind me is just a bit of sand, and if the anchor just pulls a few notches, it's under the sand, and then you're drifting, so 
It happens here quite a bit. I don't think the rugged stuff is actually as rugged as it looks on the sounder. And there's kind of more weed, so the anchor sort of grabs the weed and stops and grabs the weed and stops. And if it slips off onto the sand, you've you've lost your spot and then you've got to re-anchor again. So I had to do that. But anyway, I'm back anchored and I'm bailing up. What I'm doing here is just rotating like I always talk about. I rotate. Cast that one, let it sink. Cast this plastic out. I'll let that sink and then I'll move for that one, wind it in, cast that one back out. By the time that one's cast out, I'll get to this one, wind it in, cast it out. So I'm always rotating, so there's always a bait dropping. I'm going to come in here out of the wind. It's pretty windy out there. What I try to do is always have a bait on the fall or a plastic on the fall. Um, it's all right, you can, they will pick it up sitting on the bottom, but I find the bait's just a lot more visible if it's mid-water and sort of drifting down through the burley trail. Obviously the burley's all through there, they'll be swimming through the burley. If your bait or your lure's on the drop, mid-water, it's a lot more visible than if it's sitting down on the bottom, um, hidden amongst weed or rocks or whatever else is down there. So I'll, I always try to rotate. I'll have one and always on the sink. So as that plastic gets to the bottom, I'll wind that in. I'll chuck it back out and then I'll wind this one in and I'll chuck it back out. So they're always sinking. Just something to keep in mind anyway. It's got a bit of a touch there. So this is my paddle prawn, so I'm just lifting it gently and then let it sink back down again. But then I'll take a couple of winds, lift it gently, pause and let it sink again just really slowly. You can't work plastic slow enough for snapper. If you work them too fast, you just won't get them. Oh, no! Oh, devastating. to a three chefs tackle paddle tail here now. I've actually trimmed the tail down a little bit to make it a bit less aggressive in its action. And it sinks like super slow, which is what I always aim for. Oh yeah, well, that's it for me. Didn't exactly set the world on fire today, too skippy. I had one good run, but it was in the reef before I even got the rod out of the holder, it was in the reef and it dumped me, so I don't know what that was. Probably a big Sambo or a King perhaps. Anyway, that's the reality of fishing in Perth. You can't always catch. Well, that's the reality of fishing anywhere, really. You don't always catch. But this is the reality of fishing in Perth in summertime. Punch them back in. Punch them back into a 20 knot easterly. Uh, it's not so bad when you've got fish on the deck, but when you got nothing, it just makes the ride seem like a very rough and ugly place to be, but that's fishing. Anyway, if you like that stuff, see you in the next episode.